in continuation to the previously published videos uh, general characters of uh, fungi so today now we will see a juice spore morphology in a uh, fungi this is actually more connected to flagellation or uh, flagellar types in fungi that we have already published but uh, this is more connected to in continuation to that flagellar types so now we will see what are, what is uh, juice spore morphology how many types of uh, juice spores are generally there and internal structures also i am anish shankar reddy phd plant pathology so let's starts with the definition of uh, a juice spore generally this juice spore is a motile spore naked generally single cell that is a uninucleate asexual spore that actually functions as a locomotory organ or a dispersal agent so this uh, juice spore i repeat once again it is a motile naked uninucleate asexual spore that is produced by various kinds of organisms generally this juice spore is also known as a swam spore or swimming spore like it is swimming right with the help of this flagella and also called as a plano spore also called as motile spore almost all the names will give you the same meaning almost so this actually the spores are created by like are produced by like some protist bacteria also produces uh, flagella like uh, flagellation right fungi also produces flagella and uh, kinds of juice spores generally used for propagation and as well as a locomotion also let's uh, come in detail about the fungi here when it comes to the fungi the groups are belonging to like uh, plasmodia poromycota actually it's a protozoa but it's a fungal like organism right umycetes also straminophila or uh, it actually comes under chromista but it's a fungal like organism this is a plasmodia poromycota Omycota, Myxomycota, Chytridiomycota, and many other fungi also generally produces juice spores uh, mainly for locomotory organs. This is how I generally uh, the juice spore look like, which is having two uh, hair-like structures, uh, uh, two uh, two like uh, tail-like structures, right? So in deviation is also there when we go in detail about uh, this uh, juice spores and all those things. If it is in upward direction, it is called anterior. If it is in a downward direction, it is called a posterior. so to understand in detail about this juice spore what is this juice spore let's have some common features of this juice spores generally if the juice spore is in anterior direction it is called epistocont it's a in detail terminology sometimes uh, we may expect in exams they don't ask directly anterior or what is a posterior right so sometimes they may ask what is epistocont or opistocont type of uh, flagella okay generally uh, epist you guys know about what is flagella right it's a locomotory organ okay so this anterior flagella generally called as epistocont if it is in the flagella is in downward direction or posterior direction it is called opistocont so again this uh, whiplash whiplash means this types of flagella we need to understand whiplash means flagella without hair a uh, hair is otherwise called as flimmers flagella without hair is known as whiplash tinsel means flagella with hair is known as tinsel so whiplash type is generally known as acronymatic tinsel type is known as pantonymatic i repeat once again if whiplash means acronymatic tinsel means pantonymatic and the most important thing is whiplash is the flagella without hair tinsel is a flagella with hair with hair means tinsel without hair means a whiplash let's come to another basic terminology what is kinetosome or blepharoblast so here actually wherever the flagellum is originated this is imagine this is the juice spore wherever the exact origin point or where exact wherever the flagellum is originated from the basal body that origin point is known as blepharoblast or kinetosome so the second one is auxonium you if you see imagine this is a flagella if you go internal structure of the flagella light form a core tube like structure right a central core or tube is known as axonym imagine this is the central core or on the right side i have placed a picture right so this is in the central core body is generally known as axonym wherever the point wherever the flagellum originates is known as blepharoblast or kinetosome so if it is having hair what i told it is called a tinsel so that hair is known as hair like structure is known as mastigonemes i repeat once again this hair like structure is known as mastigonemes or flimmers i told you the origin point is kinetosome right we can see a picture here this origin this exact origin is known as kinetosome or blepharoblast let me come once again the flagella is anterior direction it is called epistocont posterior means opistocont 
whiplash means flagella without hair tinsel means flagella with hair to understand another basic terminologies blepharoblast and axonemes are the two important terminologies so blepharoblast means wherever the flagella is originating that originating point is known as blepharoblast the next one is axoneme the central body or central tube is there right so that the central core or central tube or axial filament is generally known as axonemes with hair means i told you tinsel right that hair like structures are known as flimmers or mastigonemes it's a very important terminology so this is as i told you this uh, kinetosome right this kinetosome is also known as uh, blepharoblast this exact origin point so this origin point is known as kinetosome or blepharoblast so if you see this uh, cross section uh, generally this axoneme as i told you central tube or central tube like structure right this is flagella if you see this uh, cross section of this axoneme or central tube generally uh, eukaryotes like a fungi contains a 9 plus 2 types of arrangement whereas a bacteria is a lack of 9 plus 2 so it contains 9 plus 1 let me see what is this uh, 9 plus 2 so if you see here this axoneme the axoneme is like a just <clears throat> you can take an example of a hair if you take the cross section of a hair here the hair contains 9 outer rings and two inner rings that is called 9 plus 2 which is actually present in fungi very important one fungi and eukaryotes this uh, 9 plus 2 is absent in bacteria instead of 9 plus 2 9 plus 1 is present this is a micrograph picture you can see nine tubules are that is a, a coupled tube like what is a bi tubules right which is a pair of tubules nine a pair of tubules outside and a inner one pair that is a two so this is a 9 plus 2 arrangement which is actually present in eukaryotes or fungi this is same you can see here this is a inner pair this is these are all the nine outer pairs you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 nine outer pairs so one inner pair will be present that is a 9 plus 2 this is generally a cross section of axoneme axoneme is you can consider it as a tube inner tube right you are, we are taking the cross section of the inner tube so inner tube this is how it look like so here uh, inner uh, nine outer rings are two inner rings are present in eukaryotes so in prokaryotes only one inner ring is present the best example is a uh, bacteria to understand in detail uh, this is an actually an ultra structure of a uh, juice spore of uh, plethocytrim planicone so here uh, you no need to worry about all this uh, structures you just remember this two three all those things here that two Uh, picture number 2 will explains the longitudinal section whereas uh, picture number 3 explains the transverse section of this uh, juice spore in detail so here we can see a small thing like a k k means kinetosome i told you wherever the flagellum attaches the origin point is known as kinetosome or blepharoblast attaching point right so if we see the fourth one is a kinetosome longitudinal section at the base of the flagellum we can clearly see here the fourth and so fifth and sixth picture represents a transverse section of the kinetosome that kinetosome this is a kinetosome we can clearly observe the attachment point right and this is the seventh one is endoplasmic reticulum and the outside the eighth one is a spore coat Uh, our coat of a juice spore coat we can see something here right this is actually the spore coat which is actually covers the juice spore outer body so to understand in detail like uh, what all the, what exactly the juice spore is contains what exactly the juice spore is packed with right so now we will see generally the juice spore uh, uh, contains various kinds of uh, components right uh, golgi operators nucleus this nucleus is actually covered by a cap like structure called a nuclear cap and uh, type of flagellum whiplash or tinsel that we have discussed mitochondria and generally mitochondria is used for energy generation endoplasmic retic reticulum liquid droplet nucleolus and various uh, other kinds of uh, structures also present uh, generally present in uh, uh, this uh, flagella you can also take uh, dictyosomes lipid bodies nucleus ribosomes Uh, you know fiber containing regions so vacuoles uh, centrioles associated with uh, bodies and various kinds of uh, things and structures are actually present you guys just remember this uh, mitochondrion because mitochondrion is energy generation right 
so for a movement of this uh, flagella like a tinsel or maybe whiplash the energy is actually generated from this mitochondrion which transfers to this flagella now i will tell you how it is actually generated and i will close in a general way only not in detail so here uh, first of all we will see the basic types of flagella in fungi even though we have already discussed this let me go once again in a fast way so here there are four types of uh, flagella is present chytridiomycetes hypochytridiomycetes plasmodiaporomycetes oomycetes these are all the four classes of fungi which produces various kinds so to already told you if the flagella is in anterior direction anterior if it is in a downward direction it is called posterior right so if the flagella is having a hairs it is called a tinsel if the flagella is having no hairs it is called a whiplash we will see the first one the flagella is in a downward direction which means posterior and contains no flagella so it is a whiplash right so the first flagella type is a posterior whiplash type of flagella posterior whiplash posterior means a downward direction whiplash means without hair that is produced by the fungi chytridiomycetes you can take the second one if the flagella is in anterior direction upward direction it is called anterior it is having hair it is called so it is called a tinsel which means anterior tinsel right so anterior tinsel the best example is hypochytridiomycetes so you sometimes they may confuse you with the giving a fungi from chytridiomycetes or hypochytridiomycetes you guys need to just remember the important fungi that comes under this chytridiomycetes and hypochytridiomycetes or plasmodiaporomycetes or oomycetes in plasmodiaporomycetes there is only one important fungi that is a club root of cabbage in oomycetes pithium pytoptera and downy mildew fungi right so the second one is the third one is uh, uh, this one we can see both flowers are layer upward direction only and contains no hair which means whiplash type so here two flagella is present two flagella means a biflagellate one is a short end another is an is a long end so we can say this in this way like a biflagellate with a anterior whiplash type whiplash means no hair one is a short end one is a long end so biflagellate with two anterior whiplash type one is a short and one is a long example is plasmodiaporomycetes the last one is a biflagellate anterior tinsel tinsel means with hair posterior whiplash whiplash means without hair anterior tinsel and a posterior whiplash type of flagella is produced by oomycetes group of fungi it's a very very important one these are all the uh, you know original uh, computerized pictures if you can see posterior whiplash anterior tinsel biflagellate anterior uh, whiplash type one is short one is long this one is a biflagellate with anterior tinsel and posterior whiplash so these are all the example and a very important one this is general representation upward means anterior downward means posterior with hair uh, tinsel uh, without hair whiplash type we can observe uh, posterior whiplash anterior tinsel biflagellate with anterior whiplash Uh, one short one long anterior tinsel and posterior whiplash along with the examples chytridiomycota hypochytridiomycota plasmodiaporomycota and oomycota or oomycetes that are all the different types of flagella with examples we have seen uh, different kinds of juice spores now we'll go in detail about uh, each and every one anterior type posterior type and biflagellate these are all the general common three types let's starts with the uh, posterior whiplash what is posterior downward direction what is whiplash without hair okay so this uh, posterior whiplash uh, for our understanding i have given uh, some micrographic pictures of uh, kinetosomes and as well as uh, this uh, posterior whiplash type of flagella and this is generally this uh, juice spore actually look like uh, tadpole like with generally pear in shape a uh, pear shape with a 7 to 9 micrometer in diameter and this actually this posterior flagellum so the length of the flagellum is around 20 micrometer in length so it was uh, this nucleolus or uh, this nucleus is actually covered by a nuclear cap uh, that we discussed in the previous slide also this uh, nuclear cap is actually rich in uh, rna that is a new uh, ribonucleic acid as well as the uh, proteins so this origin of flagella from the base is known as blepharoblast as i told you already so the origin or attachment point of this uh, flagellum is known as uh, blepharoblast so indeed if you see this uh, microscopic structures in the previous slide also we have see this is the microscopic structure of uh, blepharoblast so that was uh, expanded here 
again this bifroblast bifroblast contains a small uh, rootlet like structures that is called uh, banded rootlets that we are going to see in the next slide so let's come to this flagella or that is axonium this axonium is actually consist of a 9 plus 2 arrangement in eukaryotes whereas when it comes to prokaryotes it's a 9 plus 1 arrangement uh, this structure also we have uh, already seen in the previous so this let's see this is the nucleolus and nuclear cap uh, what are the different kinds of structures are that contains nucleus nucleolus mitochondrion it's a very 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 important one mitochondrium is actually very near to this of a nucleolus and uh, and also uh, this a kinetosome uh, that kinetosome is that is actually uh, blepharoblast the attachment exactly the attachment point why this uh, mitochondrion is very near uh, to this uh, uh, one mitochondrion is very near to this of uh, this uh, juice spore generally used for the generation of energy whatever the energy that is generated by the mitochondrion that is actually shifted or uh, translocated or transferred to uh, this uh, kinetosome that creates the energy to give a movement or uh, that creates energy to give a swim okay so let's talk about this uh, banded rootlets what is this banded rootlets are all these rootlets in the right side uh, i have given uh, again uh, transfer section of uh, this uh, kinetosome so this is a flagella rootlets this flagella rootlets are that exactly attached to that kinetosome ray right so this flagella rootlets are straight rootlets or banded rootlets this rootlets actually helps to extend the energy that is produced by the mitochondrion whatever the energy that is produced by the mitochondrion that energy was actually taken towards to the kinetosome region with the help of this banded rootlets this is a banded rootlets otherwise called as striated rootlets or flagella rootlets this rootlets are actually present inside this kinetosome if you take the cross section of again this kinetosome this banded rootlets will be present inside so this actually transmit the energy as i told you to the base of the axonium are exactly the kinetosome that helps uh, uh, the flagellum to create the movement in the juice spore body so the next type is the juice spore with the anterior thin cell type so just now we have seen posterior uh, whiplash type now it is at time for anterior thin cell right so in anterior thin cell the central axel is uh, the central core is known as axonium that we already discussed the hair that hair is generally known as hair like appendages are known as mastigonemes or flimmers so it's a very important to understand the last point which i was given, given here so this uh, actually possess an anterior flagellum uh, also contains hairs that hairs are known as mastigonemes or flimmers this flagellum actually arises from the kinetose region kinetosome region just now we discussed about what is kinetosome or mastigonemes uh, sorry uh, blepharoblast that are origin point right so this origin point is actually very close to the nuclear membrane how this flagellum is getting and sorry how this uh, axonium is getting energy because very one mitochondrion will be present near this uh, banded rootlets are striated rootlets which actually takes the energy from this uh, mitochondrion and transfer it to the uh, exact the base region to this uh, axonium imagine this is so here mitochondrion is there this mitochondrion energy that is transferred to this exactly base region or axonium region or uh, kinetosome region with the help of striated rootlets or banded rootlets it's like a small pipe like structures for our understanding so this energy creates create the energy created by the mitochondria helps to locomote so locomotion is like a wind direction or i would i would say uh, in a like a propulsion manner right so here uh, the large surface that is given by the mastigonemes so the mastigonemes actually gives a little bit uh, extra surface uh, uh, so that helps in the creation of uh, water currents like this uh, wavy like motions this water currents this water currents in the direction of flagellum opposite to the movement of a sin wave it's like a wave like movement will be created that actually swims to the opposite direction that gives a propulsion of the juice spores whatever the direction that the flagellum is swimming that direction it will go so to make it understand just i will tell you in a small uh, easy way just imagine the juice spore is very tiny right the swimming uh, uh, you know uh, that creates the uh, that moves through water generally it moves through water with the help of a tall a small tail like structure called a flagellum right so now just think of a mastigonemes this mastigonemes are flimmers are very tiny hair like structures that covers the flagellum this is the flagellum small hair like structures are tiny like structures that covers the flagellum right so when the flagellum moves in a wavy motion 
sin wave means wave like for example you can take uh, c in c wave like mo- uh, uh, you know this will come right so that wavy like motions are sin waves so these are uh, this flagellum moves in a wave like motions so at that time this tiny hairs are mastigonemes this tiny hairs are mastigonemes actually that helps to create the water currents this water current actually created by this mastigonemes are flimmers so this hair will create the air currents in the opposite direction so if the for example in ships also if the waves are in opposite direction it will go forward right in it will go actually this uh, flammers or mastigonemes creates the energy the opposite direction where like a wave is going on so it's a bit like when you paddle uh, in one direction of a canoe the water pushes against the paddle right however whatever the paddle that you are going that the pushes against the paddle that moving forward to the opposite direction so it is goes opposite and so that it will goes front like that in a simple words mastigonemes helps juice spores Uh, swim through water by catching the water in such a way that uh, it pushes the juice spore forward it goes the juice spore forward in this uh, direction of uh, generally the direction of flagella is pointing even though the motion of the flagella itself is going in opposite way it will actually goes into the forward direction this is generally how this anterior thin cell or this hair like structure creates a, a movement so this hair like structure only creates the sin wave so the waves opposite direction the flagella will actually moves that is how it will uh, locomotes so coming to the biflagellate types uh, uh, here generally biflagellate type we know very well that it contains uh, one tin cell type and another one is viplash type so if uh, both the tin cell and viplash type is present that is uh, that such type of uh, juice spores are known as heterocontient type of uh, juice spores this generally uh, Uh, Womycetes group of fungi, we can see the heterocontient type of uh, juice spores where it contains biflagellate uh, and also plasmodium poromycetes, right? That is also juice biflagellate. So in an, in general, dimorphism, sexual dimorphism or diplanetism can be observed in the fungi of uh, saproligniales. Now I will tell you what is monoplanetism, diplanetism, multiplanetism, or all those things that I will tell you. Here in the posterior flagellum of secondary juice spores is actually somewhat longer than that of anterior type. so this posterior is somewhat longer than that of anterior types so why uh, this kind of mechanism will be there like it, which actually provides a greater swimming force or capacity to the juice spores so greater uh, energy will be generated by this uh, long swimming uh, uh, sorry this long uh, uh, juice spore now we will see the different uh, terms uh, that we used in uh, juice spores a planetism monoplanetism diplanetism polyplanetism we will see a means no planetism or uh, again i say that uh, uh, like uh, presence of uh, power production of a juice spores generally a planetism means no swam spores swam and swimming swam means swimming so the species produces no swam spores and the production of no juice spores no juice spores will be produced and there is no swimming spores best example is geolinka that is the best example of a planetic monoplanetism mono means single so the condition in which one swam stage is uh, occurs in which only one kind of juice spore is produced so only one swam for example you can take in a pithium pithium only one kind of juice spore is uh, present and uh, only one swam stage or swimming stage is present best example is pithium monoplanetic or monoplanetism let's come to the example of diplanetic or diplanetism this is the best example for saproligniae that we already discussed in the previous slide so in which uh, the fungi is generally having two swimming stages and produces two kinds of juice spores two swimming stages are present and two kinds of juice spores are produced primary juice spores and the secondary juice spores here the primary juice spores is generally pear in shape and the secondary juice spores are kidney in shape to understand little more in saproligniae the secondary juice spores are actually produced from the encysted primary juice spores which means the primary juice spores only giving rise to the secondary juice spores for our simple understanding so such kind of things we can observe in saproligniae water mold fungus and polyplanetism which means the condition which fungi produce more than two kinds of uh, swimming stages which means uh, for example you can see uh, polyplanetism especially in uh, achaela kind of uh, fungi 
so i would say one more thing this saprolegnia akaila afadogaila leptomatous these are all the fungi even though they comes under womestis group of fungi their cell wall is made up of chitin generally womestis group of fungi cell wall is made up of cellulose but this akaila saprolegnia afadogaila leptomatous whose cell wall is made up of chitin polyplanetism means more than one kind of swarming stage or swarming stages are observed so the one important thing here is uh, uh, both the tin cell and the whiplash type of flagellum will beat in a sinusoidal just now i told you what is sinusoidal like a wave like motion in a pattern so if both are present actually the tin cell tin cell means with the hair the tin cell beats in the opposite direction because if it want to go forward the in the tin cell the hair is uh, located in the opposite direction so that it need to swim in the opposite direction that it need to beat in the opposite direction that actually gives the control axis or for the motility control it will give very good stability against this motility so generally the sinusoidal wavy movement can be observed in this uh, juice spores so to understand uh, the pictures uh, given here like a and b i will tell you in the a the direction of the movement a means uh, whiplash type without hair so in the whiplash type the direction of the movement is in the forward direction or front direction that i mean the movement of uh, this uh, flagellum is a uh, forward direction right if you see it is going forward if you see the direction of juice spore movement is in here in the b it forward but actually the direction of the water movement is backward the direction of water movement is backward so that the flagellum is going forward when it comes to tin cell type when it comes to the whiplash type the direction of the movement is a reverse direction or backward direction so that the flagella is going forward to understand in detail picture number a actually represents the direction of the movement of water which means the juice spore body moves by the reaction of opposite direction away from the flagellum opposite direction away from the flagellum uh, so that actually gives uh, going in one direction when it comes to the uh, representing the picture number b uh, tin cell flagellum a sin wave is uh, directed away from the body of the juice spore so that the net water movement towards the juice spore body so that uh, therefore it actually moves in the reverse or opposite direction so if the flagella is present it actually gives the water in a reverse direction so it will go forward so without flagella it will go in one direction that automatically go in a one direction only this is generally about uh, how it will actually creating a uh, uh, generating energy and all those things about this uh, juice spore morphology it is actually in continuation to the general characters of fungi along with uh, continuation to the flagella and uh, various types of flagella so for much more information students can refer uh, my book a vision into plant pathology complete student version for further information uh, student can reach us at uh, www.geekyresearcher.com stay geeky and stay tuned we are team geeky researchers